pick what they're comfortable with and they gotta be ready to fight they gotta go for that old you know back alley dota where you just pick some brawlers and brawl early well, well, that, is zeus. Well, well, a little zeus quite early a lot of brawler, zeus yes. is amazing mm -hmm. i would actually really like to see that let's find out if that is going to be in the cards as we Virtus are Pro's in the draft of game number two we have virtus pro versus navi and indeed virtus pro first pick navi dire side navi radiant side as they have Jin and Chance both in the pool still by the way navi has been out od and now the chance the first pick with the uh, bounty hunter and beastmaster <laughs> removed there's the first pick chance, uh, yeah. they could <clears throat> maybe go into the Earth Spirit as well, if they really want to try and focus on the lanes. But oh, no, no, it's Navi already it's getting. <laughs> okay. Okay, so they do have getting to... their staple heroes. The the, the Nature's Prophet, which is m most often the Eros hero, uh, and the Snake Io. Yeah, like like we were talking about, like they're gonna get some heroes that they're comfortable yeah. with. But it goes for both sides though, yeah. because Virtus Pro is not like they were completely uncomfortable with their heroes just now either. They had a, a, a bat rider that they played lo loads. You have Queen of Pain for G. That's insane. Mm. What's good against? So they, the one big weakness with this opening for Navi is they have Five zero lockdowns. Yeah. Uh, so that's where heroes like Ember become a little more appealing. You mentioned, or uh, I think Shiva, you brought up Ursa. Going into phase two could be a an option for them. And the VP really like their invoker though. Yeah. Like they really really do. So yep, I, I, all they were missing last game was a nice disruptor pick. I feel like Invoker <laughs> Invoker's a hero that that needs to be protected mid, right? So if they want to go Invoker, Ench is gonna have to spend a lot of time there because otherwise you know that Ira's gonna TP in mid. You know they're gonna likely dual lane. That combo was filthy though. All you do is cold snap and you get some creeps. But and... they don't have the Beastmaster this time. No, but Oh, you mean the Ench the Invoker? Yeah, the Ench ganks oh, yeah. are pretty strong. It's still decent. We saw it in game one today, right? Yeah, they had enchanters yeah, there and they had I uh, the I wouldn't mind for... seeing them take the quap, honestly. They uh, had Entrench. Entrench? Entrench. Oh. Well, very interesting. They had Entrench Drow. That's very a lot of ladies. Ladies <laughs> Night here for VP. The Polar Bears <laughs> out for the women. Wow. But will Ladies, ladies Night in Dota. Lady Dodo. I think they chose the wrong game. Hey, whoa, jeez, LD. I'm just saying. Oh, no, what Witch Doctor? He's a good guy. All right, now the Drow will likely get either banned by Navi or they're going to have a plan for it. So the Dendi Quap gets removed, uh, which they, as I mentioned, love to duel lane with the IO. Not that it's really a conventional duel lane, but it's a Navi duel lane. So do Navi ban Drow or do they bait them into picking it and then have a plan to counter? They could pick Drow themselves, right? They could do their Marana combo with the Drow. Now There's the Ur the Ursa ban back. comes out, but it's from VP. Actually. That's uh, well, I Ursa is, uh, it gets the Chandra's. Yeah. You know you don't want to play against Ursa. You yeah. just fall over. That's true. True. They could have picked it. I I doubt Navi would have picked it third. I guess it's possible. So they ban the Void, and uh, Ursa, the VP uh, brood Navi. gets removed. Neither Ursa Prophet or Io. Against Drow. Is Venge still in the pool? Isn't Venge the picker? But she's still in the pool, yes. Yeah, I think it's you need, it gives you like, aggression that you're lacking a bit of lockdown. It's a good swap for the Witch Doctor ulti. Mm -hmm. You can also get Enchantress closer to fight. You swap her into some yeah, physical It's damage. a support that can start ganks for the IO yeah. as well. Uh, and they need the Vision Hero, ideally, still. Profit, okay, but not that great at it. The Our other big hero uh, that is out there, both teams still looking for an initiator, is Batrider. There is an IO relocate save. Uh, and there is an oracle in the pool, so oh, yeah, Navi have. But at the same time, VP already have their support, so Witch Doctor is not so good against Butler. There's, the there's, the there's the Venge. So they ha they have one one stun, but still, like, if you wanted to try to run something different for VP, <clears throat> like a uh, an Ember Spirit, for example, there's only Venge Magic Missile, which can be dodged. Not much lockdown or control. I feel like some of those more mobile heroes might be in consideration for I VP. think for just pro, do you feel like they might have overlooked Lycan at all? But like not Lycan is... Good. The Navi Lycan, that is? is the Navi Drow draft, so... Yeah, like, it's, it's Drow or Lycan. I mean, both are still in the pool. They're probably yeah. not even going to pick it until last pick because they so, have the freedom. We actually saw them pick Marana so, instead of either so, of those So here's the thing. So if, the v, if VP take the Drow right now, Navi exactly. have an IO, so they can always jump the Drow in yes. the fights. They also have they the can Prophet and Revenge as well. And likely they're going to have like a Tiny or Sven as a yeah. partner. So they can, get, they can get up in the face of a Drow. And if you don't pick it as VP and then Navi go into it, uh, VP have already picked two supports they can't reliably initiate on a Drow. They're not particularly mobile. Uh, Enchantress wants to fight from range, for example, so... 
they, they will go into it, but okay. it's, it's, it's I much think of Navi an kind of put them in an awkward position else. there, where they almost had to take it. But I agree. They're Lycan is picked. Yeah, Lycan's Lycan. great against Trail. the biggest counter. Oh boy! Oh no! The big bad wolf against the little rum, rum, <laughs> white haired rum, yes! old lady. Please, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a sad thing to watch, man. That is terrifying if you're playing Drow. Well, that's you need okay. to you need to save hero. You need something that gets you out of harm's way. Mm. As a core, which core is still left that can do that? They can uh, what? They can they can save Drow. Ten seconds remaining. As a core. <gasps> a core that saves Often Drow. How maybe? about oh. Brewmaster? <laughs> they need a frontliner, but see, yeah, Brewmaster is pretty good against Sp Lycan Spirit until Breaker, you get to KB. Is the hero. Spearbreaker is also decent. Yes. You can just charge the Lycan. You can catch him. Invoker. Okay, oh, never seen that hero picked up. So. But you know what Drow is. <laughs> Not sure what he could possibly bring to this draft. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know, man. I, I don't know why is anyone, why would anyone would it's pick still, Invoker it's, right it's now. It's still very difficult against Lycan. You can't it's... escape because he has Necro three. You can't use. Right. And then I mean, you look like BKB, look at the yeah. look at the VP draft and look at when they picked her on the past. Like it is about the lane. So right. as yeah. bad as like the Lycan Drow matchup might be, uh, as much as they don't have a great defensive support. Uh, this is about winning the lanes. They have mm -hmm. Enchantress, they have the Witch Doctor as a strong lane support, Cask is good against Dio, and they have four ranged heroes. So, very much for VP, it's still this seems like win a, the lanes. a decent dandy puck game. You know, you can get up in the face of all the heroes. Puck could be good for... Mm -hmm. a, lot, a bit of magic damage for, for Enchantress. For VP as well, actually. Dream Coil is great combination with Lycan. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if Lycan gets a BKB, this game's done. No, like... but I'm saying for Na'Vi, yeah, they for pick Na'Vi. Like... Yeah, no, for Na'Vi. But I'm just... So you're just saying they don't even need to pick I think, 50 euros. I think no. Virtus Pro is agreeing <laughs> so... with you. I think what LD said is is 100% right. I mean, they just want to win the lane and then won the game, win the game in 20 Ooh. minutes because otherwise what? they okay. basically can't Randall's do it. You, they were thinking the same thing. VP yeah. banning out. So Dendi heroes. Uh, outside of the Invoker Quap Puck, he's been playing Wind, Wind Ranger is the big Wind. one. Yep. We have seen a little Death Prophet situationally. They had mixed results with the hero. <laughs> it doesn't give them a great initiator. It's actually the great dream. The dream. If, you're saying, the dream game. if you're saying that the game is already over by the time that Lycan gets a BKB, all you need is a mid that can actually survive and doesn't die per se, and can just take the game to late game and doesn't even need to win the lane. Pudge! As long as they don't lose it, right? Mm. He's got it. The lockdown, the biting. Don't pick a winner. They definitely need biting. biting. They need lockdown. <laughs> All right. They well, need something to start the fights. Venge is okay, but it's not really enough on its own. But Navi. There you go. There's the Wind Ranger. Gross. And for VP, offlaner, initiator, Spearbreaker, Night Stalker. Someone to run in and just get the get things going, soak up some damage. I think Night Stalker will take too long to get active. If you, you want, want to be active. You want someone to just destroy Oil. His whole his whole job is just to go on that little kill ball. that little ball. Destroy the ball. Zeus, dude. Sup off lane support and Zeus. <laughs> right, yeah, that's a lot of burst damage and stun oh, and pressure. Right, so is it a uh, core enchantress or is this the or is this something real? I guess it has to. Okay, be right. so uh, we are gonna see the no fear. Yeah, it is the off lane. It is the FNG enchantress. If the game goes past twenty minutes, I think Navi just win. But I, if, I agree. If they push early. Protection. So we said that same thing for the first game today, right? If it yeah. goes past twenty minutes. Verge Pro lose, but then it didn't go past 20 minutes and Verge Pro won in 17 minutes. The question is, is it going to happen again? Are they going to be able to do that against Na'Vi? LD, I'll let you be the first one to decide which box you want to be supporting. Oh, damn. I wanted to go last. <laughs> um, really tough call. I was not particularly impressed by No Fears or Spirit the other day. Uh, I'm going to go with Na'Vi. I, I think if VP execute, they can win. Like I don't think they've been outdrafted, but yeah. I just have more faith in Na'Vi's execution. Five yeah, I'm gonna go remaining. with Navi as well. I think physical damage from Lycan, open dress face, it's just too much to deal with. Pass me the dinosaur. There you go. Argo, be, what do we think? Be gentle. Oh, VP, are battle. you sure? <laughs> Wind Ranger, okay. VP, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Is Dandy gonna have to explain to you again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go he with Navi. He just Navi enjoys for this getting. Oh, crap. <laughs> Up by I just, you know, I really think that Virtus Pro can do it. Same thing as LD. They have to draft, but they have just drafted themselves in the corner. If they make one or two mistakes, they're done for. And I think that Navi is going to be forcing just, the mistakes out and going to be able to draw the game out long enough for them to just keep on stroking that Virtus dinosaur. Pro. We're going to find out what our commentators think. It is time for game two of the night and the last dinosaur. game of the night. And actually, the last time, I'm going to be handing it over here to Odie Pixel, who is leaving tomorrow. But at least Andy will be here tomorrow with me again. But first, game number two here right now. 
30 seconds to battle. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, the final game of the day, the final series, Navi versus VP. Game two, it's underway. Let's get ourselves into the action, and there wasn't that punch pick, Andy, that I was hoping for. I'm sure a few of the ladies you and, and gentlemen Jake, are man. Yeah. You and Jake. I was, but still, we get the win, Ranger. It's a bit of a playmaker. It's a lot of fun to see Denny pull off these shackles. We may see a team fight here, indeed. Five on five. Here we go. So the Dragon Snake Code. Not enough. Magic Missiles of no fit. Can they find first place? Yes, they can. Navi find one. Look at the G as well. Digiro will go down, but G, he's going to get taken down and return. Double Kill for Artstyle Dendi. Gotta be careful. Still trying to get the right clicks onto Yoku. FNG chasing Artstyle down towards the south. Oh, he's gonna plant a tree eat himself. He's got that double duration of the regen. They're still gonna try and chase him here. Artstyle again tangoing for the tree line at Lower Tiles. Looking for the vision to find that cast. Can he come out once? Now they've got the right click to do it. Artstyle trying to tell us a lot. Artstyle's gonna do it down. It's a two for two. Ending up there at that rune fight. Navi so, getting uh, themselves. Uh, I believe it was Navi's first, bud. Yeah, but VP yes. still won the engagement because they get the rune, which means the FNG has level 2 on the first creep wave, like before any creeps even die, so that's a little bit of a problem. Art style forced to uh, TP back a lane. He did get quite a bit of money from that, though, because he got the double. I don't know, I still think that VP are happy with that trade. Well, let's see if Navi can find something more, make it a bit healthier for themselves. The house pop, the magic missile onto no fit, they'll try and follow free, but Art still's gonna be a bit careful. FNG coming in with the right clips, no fit turns around, rolls in, takes him down, and Art style punished there. Maybe getting a little bit carried away with the tempo that this game's going, and VP will smack him right back down in the face. All right, so the next couple of times the skirmishes go down, I would expect to see General start TPing, or to start TPing, because he's already level two. Probably going to just TP down there throughout his sprout if he gets like level three or four. And it's very difficult, actually, for VP's safe lane to zone this hero, because oh. Treants, they're broken. They're actually just broken. They, they deal way too much damage, have 550 health. And Roly Poly looking for Dichira and the Orb of Venom here slowing him down as well as FNG. Now using the enchant, but Dichira will get himself away. He has got a salve, he'll pop it. Top lane, General turning around to Lower Dance. Hostel comes in with a magic missile. Voodoo Restoration, is it going to be enough? Pops the Fairy Fire, it might just one more touch from Hostel, will do it. They'll get themselves to kill us, the Witch Doctor now. Hostel looking to force back Yoku here on the Drow Ranger. Yoku turning. It's one of the frost arrows in and starts to force him back. There will be a sunstrike. Where the hell is it going? There it is. Woods looking to try and help him out. And Arstock just turns. He's got another magic missile. Pops onto Yoku. The right clicks from General are doing up. But now Lord does get the paralyzing cask out. Forcing back this nature's prophet. General trying to hide himself in the tree line. Looking for the dukes around. The creeps are after him. So is the witch dog. But the creeps actually blocking Lord does mid lane though. Dendi gets his shackle. Verify. Pop my G. The right clicks are going to be able to bring it down. No fear. Rolls in. Forces back Narvi and will hold them away from G. As he's able to keep himself alive on the Invoker, but 4 for 3 at the moment, things certainly turning up here in the game 2 of this series. You can definitely tell both teams understand how important the laning phase is. Like, just trying to get a little bit ahead as VP when you have a drill lineup, we saw how fast they can just snowball that into a quick win. 17 minutes, I think, was when they actually got the GG out of Vega in the first series. So, you really, really want to win your lane if you're VP. So, you're just going everywhere trying to find fights. Likewise, Navi know if they can stop that pressure before it happens, then they'll be in a position that is not necessarily unlosable, but it's it's much better for them to be playing from ahead before VP start doing the five-man thing where they just go for your tier one towers and then just push and push and push. Because Lycan is fantastic against Dro once you get a couple of items going, but that needs, you know, you need time for that. And VP are gonna want to play a fast-paced game. So the more time they can buy, the better it's going to be for Navi. And G wasn't having a nice time in terms of CS in the mid lane, so he's TP down to the bottom. He's going to have a much better chance of finding decent farm against Dichiro on his own at the moment on the Lycan. So G's Invoker will begin to catch up, but Dendi, he's the man seeing the top. And again, it's because of this presence of Seneko helping him out in the mid lane. And now Seneko's gone. Dendi's all alone in FNG and no fit. We'll see if they look to do anything. Dendi punching away at FNG, keeping the Enchantress at bay. No fit. Not wanting to roll in at the moment, and top lane, in fact, there's the action kicking off here as Artstyle again, setting up onto Yoku. General comes in with a TP and they'll get the takedown. Drow gone, and another punishing play from Na'Vi there onto the top lane, keeping Yoku in place so that Na'Vi can make sure this Drow does not get ahead of them. He hits so hard just with phase boots, like having the Minus Armor, the Venjor, Howl on top of that. Just a TPing Nature's Prophet can do so much for you in this early game. And it's why I really think that picking a five-man push strategy like VP have against the Furion is always going to be a bit risky. Goku, I mean, yeah, Art Star. He's looking for some solo action onto Aloha Dance, but no fizz there with the roll in onto Art Star. Art Star trying to do what he can, setting it up for the man on the Nature's Prophet, and they'll find it. They managed to find the trade. It's a one-for-one. One. VP, can they get more? There's an Arcane Rune on no fear. He's got the roll in. Does he want to use it? Now nah, he's got to run. He's got to be careful. As you said earlier, this right-click from General. 
With the auras, the hounds in the face. He hits for it's 93 very, damage. Very scary. Uh, four and a half minutes in. Yeah. Mid lane, Dendi. Tethered up by Seneco. Win running four. There'll be a TP, but the pool's already slapping in onto G's. Falling low, the shackle buys time for the challenge to get the power shot on point. And they'll get it. They'll lower darts. Cast out to Seneco. Roll comes in the stones as they find one. Can they get Denny as well? This could be a huge green up in the mid lane. If Phoebe can do it, they can. Double oh. kill for a low hard dance. His wind run just came off cool now when he died. That oh. last hit. Heart style. Let's go for some solo action. He says, I need a birdie. General says, I'll tap myself in. He's got a TP there. No, he's got a TP <laughs> there. Where's he going to go? He's going to go here. No. In fact, he holds on for the time being because at the same time, VP are coming through. General says, Heart style, you're on your own here, buddy. I don't want to join this one. There's a little bit of a suicide run and bam, he comes the Art Styles down and VP hit back to get themselves another kill, equalizing on the board. General was looking for the tower, he's gonna go for the TP out. Have they got anything to stop it? No, he will manage to escape, and a VP should be able to get the tower tonight here on the top lane. It's just an absolute slugfest to see who can pull ahead in the lanes. I mean, the tier one almost being dead in the safe lane, the VP is definitely not a good sign. They will get the deny though, as you were saying. Aloha Dan secures that. But you gotta be a little bit worried for VP right now. They are they're getting return kills, you know, it's seven to seven. But Navi are still pulling ahead, getting the map control by killing the safe lane, so you can actually roam a little bit more. General, forcing himself onto a low hard dance, but Yoku is around and FNG smokes up. He's bringing in the Centaur. General's got to be careful, but he has oh, got the support style. of Art Style. Nice TP in as well. This might be enough to just hold FNG back from making that movement and talking of making movements. Mid lane, Denny's going in again, and he'll find it with the help of Suneko. Another kill on G in the mid lane. Dendi finding a lot of favorable action. 1-1-3 one, one, at the moment, and General TPing in top. Gust holding him back for the time being in lower dance, trying to go for the smart play, TPing out, and he'll make it with a Voodoo Restoration on. Not enough damage for General to bite through that, and Seneco trying to toy with FNG, but he still goes down. FNG finds the kill. Can Dendi finish off? FNG says, kill me, Ancients, and they will. He manages to deny himself there. A nice play from FNG, starting to punish Dendi and his girlfriend in the mid lane. Now what's actually going on in this game? It's just battle. Six minutes in, 16 kills. Hey, hey, hey. Stun and silence, and now they're slow as well. G trying to move in, but then he gets the chance to get the win run off, and this might be enough for him to escape. He'll get himself back to the tier one, and he'll be fine. The biggest issue I think that the VPR are running into is even though it, they get like a pick or whatever, but this whole time, Date Yura's like, you know, pushing bottom, the Furian's pushing top. Oh, jeez! Oh, my. And now General, he wants to find something sprout. Onto a low art dance. Yeah, this is going to be fun for the time being, but there's an art style with a magic missile on the howl, and Seneco says, I'll take that one. Gets the spin around with the balls. It's a double kill for Ayo. After being credited with that pick up onto G in the mid lane as well. And now General, he's already managed to do his job top, taking the tier one down there. We'll see where his next point of call is. You got art style eyeing up Yoko on the top lane, FNG. Trying to find what he can on the bottom. And General. Looking to cut the wave and allow this push for Navi to continue on the top. He's got seven minute phase drums. Seven minutes. I mean, Andy, I said if uh, VP wanted a chance, they have to stop General from getting the Beast or the the um, the Batrider. The uh, Furion apparently is pretty uh, bad too. Yeah, a bit of a bigger issue. I'll relocate here. And the FNG, the Shackle won't let. He's got the Focus Fire, but FNG got the heal out. The Chirag's gonna try and run this one down, trying to block him up. They've got the Sprout's control. Hastrun is there. Who's gonna grab it? Nice stun coming through for the first rear, but oh, Seneco just getting himself out in time. No, he still goes down. He will get taken down. Invoker G managed to find the final touch on him. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. And one for one, G. On the mid, he's fine. He, he has got the rest of VP near him, and no fear has got a haste rune. I'll we'll see if he can get himself up and find out Art Style, who's hanging around on his own on the top lane. Art Style can't really reveal himself here. He's got to be careful. Oh, okay. There might be backup general. Looking for the teleport in. Yoku's been found out. Magic missile to the face, and general starting to get the punches in. Can they take Yoku down? There's going to be TB reaction to Yoku. He's going to get gone. Killing spree for general now. Can he escape? No fear. Low hard dance and FNG looking for the chase down. Rolling forward. They'll get it. G's there with the cutoff as well. They should be able to find general. It's going to take him a bit of a punch, and they do. Oh! Oh, nearly saved. There's Denny gets the shackle onto G, trying to take it down with the Voodoo Restoration, and now the Paralyzing Cards holding the back. Art oh, Style taking down. They'll find G, but it's double kill for no fear. Shot onto Denny's going to for the TB out. Can he make it? They've got anything to hold it back, and no, they haven't. Denny will escape. But they do find three there, VP. The space though is created for Ditcher on the bottom lane to find a tier one, and still this game, nine minutes in, 25 kills so far. It's kind of the glaring issue of VP's lineup, is they're fighting 5v4 because the Lycan is never coming to fights. We have not seen Deira make one appearance, really, in a team fight that's occurred anywhere other than bottom lane. So what that's saying is VP are essentially trading even in a 4v5. It's not done yet, General. Slow 
much and slaps onto FNG. The shackles through and the magic missile from Artstyle says he's taking that one. Oh, yeah. Tower to boot as well. It's a really bad sign for VP that they're actually losing. Like, all three of their tier ones are dead already. It's nine minutes in. All the outer tier towers are manning for Navi. They're just going to go straight for Roshan. Vlad's is available. They got Treants to tank it up. They got Howl and Venge. Have they got any chance of stopping this one? It's dying pretty fast. They have an idea that it's going on, but I don't know if they're going to make it. They need a huge kick stun from the Spirit. Let's see if they can do it in time. No, it's gone. Dendi grabs himself the Aegis. And Navi with another successful objective under their belt. My goodness, this is just insane. And drums and Maelstrom out for the to side of Navi. There's a mech being closed in upon by General. I don't actually know what you're supposed to do now as VP. I mean, you can hope for some picks, sure, but all the I mean, General would be a lovely pick. A lot of dance and no pick coming in. Can they deal with this man on their own? The Death Lord has to be out of range, but the Substrike will connect. They'll control him with the stun. So he's going to go for the TP out. No, surely he doesn't. Oh, he nearly does. Nearly gets himself out. FNG. He'll be getting himself out in a different way. He's gone down, and it's a 1-1. I mean, VP, they will be happy that they got a General, but they lose a hero in return, and... Looks to be a tier two as well as this bottom lane push comes through. G trying to find a trade off the tier one mid. Art style coming in. He's got a swap and a magic missile. Needs a bit more though than just himself. And it looks like there won't be any backup coming through. Ah, sorry. Here comes the relocate. Dendi being brought in. They're trying to kill Art style, but G, he's going to get taken down by Dendi. The Mel's approach. Art style and Snake are still alive, but they do still go down. Alara does. Picking that one off. No fear with the stun. The silence onto Dendi. They turn and they'll take it. The Aegis taken out of the hands of Dendi. But now Dijerard turning up in wolf form. The big bad wolf looking for no fear. General, can get the block. No, it's in Dichara. Stop no fear from being able to roll away. They're just proud. The right pick, the power shot from Denny to finish it off. They'll take down no fear on his earth spirit. And they may have lost two supports, but Navi keeping the fights going their way. Now they look for another tier two in this mid. FNG on the sidelines. He can't really do a lot on his own. He needs the team, he needs the backup. He's going to try and come in, but FNG. You've got to be careful. There's a lot of people in focus firing onto the Enchantress. They should find it, and they will. A mega kill streak for the man. There's a paralyzing cast flying through, but you don't want to be running up into this high ground if you're VP. Navi are certainly ready to fight if VP try and take it. And Navi back in. Dendi and the boys ready to finish off the tier two. They've got to be so careful with their positioning. Maybe coming a little bit too close for comfort, but lower dance holds oh. it back. But the Jackal onto G. Nice kick from No Fear. The Death Lord has been popped down, but Dijerard trying to run in with the punches on this Lycan. Tanking up the Death Lord needs to be careful with the armor attack. He maybe go down, but Sudeiko, oh, he can't quite keep him alive. The Magnetize forcing Na'Vi back. General will TP away. The Magic Missile from Artstar buying some time for Na'Vi to retreat. Jackal onto No Fear to control him on the Earth Spirit. And Na'Vi. It looks like they won't lose anything more here. They're going to ward down on the way out. They'll spot it out here, and they should be able to get a quick D ward. Art style, Radiant's duking it out. Is under attack. And he'll live, but Dendi. With the, Casually uh, killing the draw yeah. again. As soon as relocates back, Sinoka just bringing Dendi into the action. They just wrapped the magic missile onto No Fear. He's in a bit of trouble. He has got back up. General with the right pitch. He'll find it. No Fear down. Arstar will get taken down in return. Aloha does being focused by Sineko and Dendi. They should be able to find it. One more rack that will seal the deal. Triple kill for Dendi. And G, the last man left standing, and Dendi's not done. Trying to blink forward. Getting himself around the trance. Can he get this G Invoker kill as well? He's got the help of Seneko if needed. And one more shot. He's got a power shot. Can he line it up? He doesn't need to because General's there. He does. He does. It's Dendi. Ultra kill on the Wind Ranger. It just doesn't stop. The top four heroes on the net worth all on the side of Na'Vi and Dendi. Nearly doubling the highest on VP, which actually is the goddamn Witch Doctor. I... I don't know what to say. It's just non-stop fighting and Navi are just getting the better engagements every single time. I think the Furion, again, just he got so much out of his lane. He's teleporting around, finding kills, Dendi landing shackle after shackle. It's just Navi are playing on another level right now. And to be honest, as a draw lineup, if you look at this game, it's 14 minutes in. In three minutes from this point, they had beaten Vega. That means that all the Rider Towers was dead, and they racked them, and won multiple oh, team Dendi fights. Oh, Dendi shackling, no fear, focus fire as well, Seneko's there to maybe even look for more. Uh, Spirit gone, they're ready to chase, the drums are popping, Lodal's looking for the TP out, will he make it? No, he's just, just in time, gets himself out. I, I don't think there's ever going to be a strong timing for VP with... Four, with... I mean, did you rise a 14 minutes solo crest on top of the lap? Yeah, they're just going to go high grounds. 
Nice defensive ice wall there coming in from G. But that's a level 9 invoker compared to almost a level 12 Wind Ranger. And for those of you who don't know, going from 11 to 12 is a huge amount of experience in comparison from going like to even 9 to 10 or 11 to 12. Or sorry, 12 to 13. So he's actually insanely far ahead. I'm not really sure what the comeback play is here from Virtus Pro. This this lineup needs to be playing from ahead, and FNG just wasn't really able to get much after the first skirmish at the Rune. It's just been all Na'Vi. Yeah, you're making these trades, but you're never actually pressuring Na'Vi's side of the map. Na'Vi are always throwing the first punch. They're always w running into you, taking fights on their own terms. They're not letting you, you know, get damage on the towers. They're not letting you go for any objective without going at you first. And the other thing is, their lineup is much more mobile. So Io and Therian can be anywhere on the map at any given point. So if Dendi hit gets like a blink shackle, they always do this. They pick at least one hero that synergizes well with the Wisp gank. So you blink shackle somebody, there's a relocate. Sometimes they get Beastmaster, sometimes they get Batrider, but there's always that one hero who can help set up for the fight. And then you have General, the guy who just literally always has second highest net worth no matter what hero he's freaking playing somehow. Just having another standout performance. I felt like their supports weren't really well built to deal with Furion in lane. Because Dro doesn't beat Furion in lane. Not not even close. You get wrecked by trees. So they have to have one support sitting there that whole time. And even when they send, you know, no fear up to gank, you're trilining against a Furion who will eventually recover while the rest of the team, you know, Navi farms. And Dayura, we talked about it. First, you know, 10 minutes of the game doesn't seem like that long, but he didn't go to a single fight until after 10 minutes. General joining the boys here to really kick comes through. Aloha Hotel's being focused down. Just get a nice death ward, a decent amount to General. And now here with the rolling, no fear gets a free man magnetized off the lower dance is still alive. Stance onto the Gerard, they're forced back into the pits, and they come with a re relocate back out. Saves the Gerard. He's gonna be fine. Oh, oh okay, 100 HP. <laughs> would have been funny if it missed. It but. would. And they save it as well. They knew it was coming in. No, oh, he's got the regen. But good stuff there for VP. I mean, they get jumped on by Na'Vi, and they don't lose anyone. But I mean, that's a really bad bad thing to say, right? It's like, oh, we didn't die, that's good. But we didn't kill anyone either. I think Aloha Dance, is he going to be able to say that himself, though? They're trying to chase, but uh, maybe. He's just a little quick. Actually, tethering to the wall to bring himself into range. Dendi jumps in and takes him out. Beyond the guns like here on the Wim Ranger. What a performance here from Dendi. Yeah, I think... Dendi might just be, you know, up there with the Weeha Wind Ranger. Really, the only two people I think who play it a ton, or at least used to. You know what I mean? Like when when we was playing for Secret, he showed that his Wind Ranger was ban worthy, and I think Dendi is making a good case for his might being oh, a ban worthy. Oh, well. look at this wraparound! He's trying to go in. Did your ass says, "What are you tickling me for, mate?" Pops the ult, starts to run away. Now the impetus will hurt. I missed, man. So oh, man. OP. That evasion, though. Yeah, I'm not sure. VP are holding on, but. Dendi. I don't know if they're ever going to get to that critical mass. I mean, Deddy's 12 one seven. Yeah, he's he's owning. This is the thing with VP's lineup. They are all right-clickers, pretty much. Like, Dro, Exert Invoker does a lot of right-click damage. Enchantress does a lot of right-click damage. Death Ward can also miss, which makes Windrun a ridiculously good ability against their heroes. So you pop Windrun, the only person who can really hurt you is Earth Spirit. Like, you dodge all the Impetus auto-attacks, you dodge all the Dro auto-attacks. And when you have this kind of a start, and you're level 13 in an 18-minute game, you're feeling pretty confident. And he's also going to have BKB done. It's being sent out on the courier right now. So blink BKB Maelstrom, 18 minutes. This is insanely fast. Even in like a 25-minute game, this is still a good item progression. And we are like 75% of that. Let's see if Na'Vi can continue with this massive momentum that they have managed to surmount so far in this game. Vale is now done on no physics for it. And we have seen that VP can survive the fights. They're just still waiting for for that power that's gonna allow them to turn them on its head and, and finally kill and no, talking about finally kill general. I was thinking a little bit about TPing up onto to FNG up this top. This is there. a fast rush. Yeah no contesting this. Alright, so now the question is, can VP defend high ground? And can VP kill Dendi twice? Uh, killing him once, I think, is going to be tough. And let's see how full in now if you want to go. With this push, clearing in the mid lane and the bottom lane. He should sure have got two avenues to look for the high ground advance. Once it comes through. And VP... 
They need something huge. They need five man magnetizers, five man invoker combos, huge yeah. death wards. Jeez, even the Wisp has a freaking hood and a ghost scepter. All right. He's just going to be going for the pipe, I suppose. I, I mean, Sneko is as rich as G's invoker. Mm hmm. It ain't great. It ain't great for VP. I mean, uh, what, what? It's just. I don't know. It, oh, it just seems like Navi. They just have this sense of confidence where they know as long as they're just continually fighting and making VP skirmish with them, that even if they're trading in the fights evenly, which a lot of the times they were, it was only recently that Navi pulled ahead in the kill department, they were just getting more out of the map during that time than what VP were capable of doing. Because again, Date Your was just free farming. It was a 4v5 game. And then at 15 minutes, Date Your was like, oh yeah, I'm in the game. It's like, gee, he's going to be forced to TP back to base here. And this is that scary point where the Furion's pushing in all your lanes. You have a little bit of catch, but not quite enough to where you can just actively hunt down general on the map. And even if you could, Nabi are coming in. I'll start swapping in G and Invoker getting controlled and taken down. That's G gone for 45 seconds. Can he post the BKB shackle? And looking for the attention onto Aloha Dance. He wouldn't be able to walk it off. That's a nice magnetize. But with the BKBs out, Navi's still fighting strong. No fear gone as well. Two down. There's a dead board hitting away at Dichara. He'll get taken back here now, running back in straight away. Looking for FNG. Dendi falling low, and the Aegis will be popped in by Yoku. There's a buyback from Aloha Dance. If they will hold Navi off for the time being, Dendi blinks away. Oh, Star still standing there as the front liner. Sineko topping him back up. Nature's ref flies through. Aloha Dance falling low. Power shot bringing him very close to death. One more rope it will do it. And Dendi does find it. Beyond godlike now on this Wind Ranger. Yoku gusting general to hold him back in FNG. Trying to find the kill. But Sineko oh, tempering up the Nature's shot. Prophet. He'll survive. And there's a buyback from FNG. But the bottom racks are exposed. He'll be TPing through Dendi. He failed up, the stun, the silence from no this fear, but he got kill. the run out in time. Suneko's there, and then he just TP straight out of this one, oh. and he'll get away. Suneko might be left hanging up dry here. He has a hood, he has a Ghost Scepter. Can he play games with them? General's coming in as well. Suneko, no, he's not going to be able to do it. They will manage to find the IO kill, so they do protect the racks at the bottom lane, but it's still a very, very costly defense for VP. Would have been really nice if they could have killed Dendi. That would have made, you know, maybe even losing the tier 3 worth it because of how much money he has and value right now. But, unfortunately, not going to get it. They are going to at least have a little bit of time to push out their lanes. They know the Aegis is down, so it's not like Navi are going to be able to just go straight into their base two times in a row. Like you mentioned, they did successfully defend. But this is a rough road for Virtus Pro if they want to make their way back into the game. I guess on the bright side, the Invoker is getting levels. He's also getting very close to his Aghanims. That'll help a lot as the BKB starts to get shorter and shorter duration, but, you know, we say that it's still 9 seconds on Dendi. A 9 second BKB is longer than pretty much any team fight. Also, he's gonna walk into this one a little bit. No fear and GR there, no fear. Nah, he's actually too scared. Dendi now blinking in, he's right to be so. There's there a relocate go. coming through. Here's Suneko. He gets held back. By Invoker's control, but G trapped up in the Sprout. They'll catch the Invoker out. He does have buyback. He may need to think about using it if VP want to try and form a defense on this bottom lane. Ditcher at the moment, pushing in the top. He's on his own, but he's got that BKB and ult ready as well. So he's going to be a hard catch if VP try and go for it in general. Just waltzing in on the bottom. Looking to take down the range, seeing if they can try and poke out a buyback from the Invoker. They'd love to do so, Na'Vi. VP seeming to be able to hold for, and looks like Na'Vi. Not able to get a push in that's powerful enough to force G to buy back, and, and he will be back on natural terms. Now, there's no reason, I think, for Navi to go super aggressive. Even if this game was VP pressuring a lot, I think if Navi were able to hold, they would probably still have the advantage in the late game just due to their heroes. So if you're in a position where you're already controlling the map and you know that your late game is better, there's no reason to risk your lead for a play that isn't even really necessary. Like, yeah, forcing the buyback would be cool, but it's not really needed. As long as you can get the next Roshan, as long as you can keep the lanes pushed, Navi are going to be more than okay. Okay, I'm talking about pushing. General's just working on the top lane. 
Things coming out in mid, looks like Na'Vi might try and jump in, but at the same time, top lane, the stun, the silence onto General, they've caught the route out, he pops the mech, keeping alive for the time being, and in fact, with that pipe, it's nearly enough, but he still goes down, Deadpool gets dropped, so Neka pulling Rob but he's got the Ghost Scepter, and Dendi just powers into a low hard arms, will find the kill on the Witch Scripture, now look towards FNG, FNG gonna get Seneko, no, Seneko, re-relocating back out, and Dendi with the Shackle, onto the Enchantress, Enchantress, Ghost Scepter, got TP away, the fire shot, not enough magical damage to kill him, FNG will get out. It's a buyback for General for this push though. VP two men down. Aloha dance and no fear on the sidelines. No fear. Buying back on the Earth Spirit. And here's the push. The tier three. Falling very close to dropping. Ditra very much still in a very, very good position to fight. But it looks like they're just playing it safe, Navi. No point trying for anything while Sene goes down on the IO. They'll hold off. And, and at the least, they did get that buyback out. And they're still keeping the pressure in on all lanes. They need like an Aghanim's Maelstrom on this Drow. That's like how they defend. He went for a Dragon Lance, so he might just disassemble, honestly. Not sure if he wants to keep that or not. It's an okay item, I think, in this situation, but he's going to need something with a little bit more impact. And at the very least, they need some deep push because they are not so hot at it right now. And you can just see Navi are doing whatever they want. They're like, yeah, we're going to farm our own jungle, all three lanes and your jungle simultaneously, because why not? We just have that kind of a lead. Oh, and Dendi. He's got to be a little bit careful. He's on his own. Wolf gets dropped down. They will spot him out, but Dendi's actually found no fear first. Straight away. With the Shackle now, to the side, trying to juke out while G froze. And G will still catch him, but not in time to save the Earth Spirit. And that is a dieback from no fear. 50 seconds without the ES. And General resorting to cliff jungling now. He's so confident in this one. And that massive bloody orange leaf. Jeez. Yeah, dude. My goodness. The staff. The staff of the big orange flower thingy. Hey, go Scepter. Pretty good item against Ench. Pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. In in Yoku's position, if I'm on Virtus Pro, I don't know if there's any one item that I can buy. I think I need like two minimum. Ooh, geez, swapped out. Still managed to get the meteor through here. And now I'll stop. Just gonna find a few entities flying through to him. Ditchera ready to try and move in, and in fact, they'll just turn their attention towards the tier three. Fortification from VP coming out. VP can they catch the big bad wolf? Ditchera running himself away. He'll be all right. Now, no fears back. Sunstrike isn't gonna clip anyone. But again, VP are holding and making it just a little bit difficult for Navi to try and fully advance to the high ground. They're still, of course, slowly just breaking down the base, though, with each of these pushes. Navi are finding the way to close the game out. Just a question if VP are going to have the time to really hit back hard and, and try and find a fight where they're able to come out on top in terms of kills. G, moving in with the Ghost Walk, looking for the vision, and he will find out Dendi here, the stun from No Fear off point. Dendi's able to dodge it. I mean, that would have been a hard kill regardless. He had BKB up. He had Wind Run as well, and he can just blink away between the, those two items. So, still waiting for Roshan to respawn. It's going to be about 30 seconds. Navi can go for that, maybe look to kill bottom or top, since both those lanes are exposed, no tier 3s in either of them. Going to be a very hard defense here for Virtus Pro. I don't even know if they can go for the Roshan pit fight, honestly. It's very difficult to fight in that area, especially when you're behind like 15k gold in EXP. I mean, they, they have to have the feeling that they're behind, maybe not that far, but with this type of lineup, you certainly don't want to be defending your own base at 27 minutes. Momentum just never really seemed to to go VP's way in this entire series. From the first game to this one, it's just Navi, constant aggression, fighting, getting objectives. Dendi. Wait, that almost latched, actually. Well, now there's the for Drow. Yeah. As you said, Joku. He, he kind of needs to it. Hold, the, hold back the, the pushes, yeah. Without it, it's just way too hard to deep push your lanes. I'm kind of surprised he kept the Dragon Lance, though. Maybe he goes BKB Butterfly or something. Maybe that's his plan. Because you can do that as well. He's the quarter staff for the Butterfly, and then obviously the Ogre for BKB. Wow, he got the he kill got on the Roshan. Kill. What Jeez. a player. <laughs> Jesus. Nice. You can't ask anymore, honestly. That was... That was pretty damn good. Very smooth. Very smooth. Indeed. Now to see if it matters. It kind of... It's like bittersweet when you make plays like that, right? Because it's like, yeah, I got Roshan, but we're still probably going to lose. Damn it. 
I mean, that guard did allow G here to, to get his blink dagger, and we'll see if that... How much that helps them here in this defense. They are very well set up for this, though. They got Sentry Ward already down, so they can see everything. But this okay. is very tough to stop. Again, the car starts to bounce, but it's only bouncing around the creeps art style. We'll walk it off. Ditchera hanging on the sidelines. VP. We've got the vision of him. They'll take over one of the walls and start to force him back here with the impetus. Ditchera, of course, holding the cheese here for the side. And mid well, meanwhile, General. Just finding the split push here on the top. What's the plan here for VP? They're going to try and jump in. Arsdal getting double silenced up. G with a nice tornado onto two. But Ditra just goes in with a BKB. And the ultimate form. FNG getting bursted down high by the Nature's Rapid. Oh, the right click for Ditra at this point. So much damage forcing them back. Yoko will just be able to get himself back to base. Ditra jumps on the cheese, but they're two down on the side of VP. The Shackle coming through, cancelling the Death Ward. A low hard arts caught in place. Power shot to seal the deal. Double kill for Dendi. He looks towards Yoku. Dendi actually going to go down here, but but he's got the ages. They managed to kill General. He's down for a long time. No buyback available. Dendi picks up a defusal here. He's had enough of some of these ghost scepters. And here will just win run himself away. Art style with the magic missile onto FNG. The ghost scepter isn't going to save him against the spirits of Seneco. And VP four on the sidelines. GG, GG is called a Navi once again here today, showing us just an insane level of play. And one that VP just was not able to keep up with. And the Drowse Trap this time round, unlike earlier against Vega, was not a success at all. I think what you can take away from this game is how to play against a lineup like this when you have abilities to like take small skirmishes. So Navi, they just never let up the pressure. That's the most important thing. When you have a lineup with a Dro, the first thing that they want to do after they hit level 6 is they want to take all your outer tier towers. Mm -hmm. Like it's just that fast. It's like boom, we hit 6 or 7. Let